everyone. Today I'm gonna explain to you about the exercise about RC4. So RC4 is the uh, keystream encryption decryption algorithm. Um, I will uh, review a little bit about how the algorithm work. So uh, the RC4 algorithm first take into a key that you input and then it use the key to uh, shuffle the array S that has the value from 0 to 255 and after shuffle the key uh, after shuffle the the value in the array S uh, whenever you need to do encryption or decryption it will give you the bytes depends on uh, how long your length text is it depends on the length of your 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 text the text that you want to encrypt or decrypt so um, okay so I will explain the detail of how it work so first of all you input a key so the key can be any length so normally from 5 to 32 bytes so for example my key can be a 5 bytes key like this 5 bytes so for every number, this is a byte. So a byte value will go from 0 to 255 in decimal or 0, 0 to FF in hexa. So either way. So after reading your key, um, here we are using C++. So in C++ we don't have a byte type. So instead of uh, instead of that we use unsigned character to represent a byte. In in my implementation I use a vector to a vector of unsigned char to store my my key. So for example in this example then I will have a vector of with the length of 5. So taking the byte, taking into the keys, then first we will initialize the we will initialize the the S array. So the S array go from 0 to 255 with the value corresponding to your I is 0 to 255. Okay, so you can either use a uh, type conversion on side chart or do the plus operator like this to convert it to convert the i value into unsigned chart. This okay. case. So after that, um, you have a value j initialized to zero. And uh, the key length of the key that you provided. Then um, you will have you will go through 255. You will uh, you will have a loop that uh, do 256 time. Um, so for every for every for every loop. It will swap the value of SI and SJ uh, based on the value of J. So it so basically it's this is just like the algorithm to swap the element in your S array. So your S array after swapping will have a a random value. We have random value in the range of 0 to 255. 
and set and set up the initial value that we assign for them. So, as you can see, the your, the key that you provided is used to generate the J value here to be able to swap the values around the S array. So, so this is the only time that your key will be used in the RC4 algorithm. Here I have a byte skipper that I will come back later and explain it. So the next the next step after you initialize the S array and uh, swap in the value of the S array is the algorithm to generate a key that you, you need for your encryption. So here it's called a uh, key stream generator. So the reason for for the word streaming is that you only you only get uh, one by one one by every time you call the the every time you call the function. So for example if if your text is hello with five bytes then you have to call the function generate key stream call generate key stream five times to get the value to get a uh, five bytes key so every time you call generate key stream you receive one byte so depends on how long your your text is um, then it will be called uh, based on the length of your text so you notice here that um, the way that it works is that it increase the i value uh, increase the J value in the range of 256 uh, you mod by 256 then it swap the value between SI and FJ then you um, get the value of K by uh, calculate the index uh, by using SI plus SJ um, mod 256 then you get the value in, in your S array based on based on the index that you receive. So noticing that your I and J will be keep uh, will be saved for the next round for the next time that you call uh, generate key stream. So here that's why inside my function uh, you don't see any declaration for I and J because I have it in in my class uh, when I when cr when I create uh, the instance of the class keystream generator so in IJ so what does it mean is that if you call the generate keystream for the first time your I and J will start at value 0 Then the second time you can't generate key stream, it will not start with, with zero or j anymore. It will start corresponding to to the value that calculated in here. So in this case, my i is one. My j is I don't know unknown because I don't know the value of si. So if I count it a second time, then my i two and then my j is a no so and if I call it to 256 time then my i value will come back to zero so here 255 time 
then 256 um, my error value will come back to zero. So that's why it's important that you notice that i and j is not going to be declared inside uh, the function um, whenever you um, whenever you you decide to put the the algorithm to generate a key okay so that sounds about a generate key stream um, so for security purpose we have a requirement that we have to skip a certain number of bytes before we actually uh, using the generate key stream so the meaning of skipping uh, a first number of bytes is just you call in the generate key stream for example if I do skip 10 bytes then I call the generate key stream call this function 10 times first on generate key stream 10 times so with without using the value of k without using the value of k um, I, I will have the demo for this so without using the value of k and then after that uh, you will start to uh, using the value of k so the seamless way to do this is that you write a loop um, number of by to skip and create a counter and then you call the function generate key stream so this is how it works for byte skipping. So how the encryption or decryption work is that um, for example here you have in my line I have hello world so for every character in in my line, in this case hello world, I will get a key, a value of k from the generate key stream, and then I will xr, I will xr the value. So c is my character, k, I get it from the generate key stream. So I xr. I XR the true value. I perform X, XR operation. Then I will receive a cipher text. Uh, I will receive the cipher value. And if I if I have the cipher value and I XR with the key, I will receive back the character. So um, keep in mind that you don't you don't save the value of k at all if you see in my code I just receive it from the generate key stream and I don't save it so whenever you want to decrypt your cipher your cipher text you provide the same key you provide the same key that you um, you use when you, you when you encrypt what I mean the same key is that the key that we use to uh, the key that we use to sh to shuffle the S array in the beginning so in my encryption I use this key 55, 60, 70, 125, 254 then in my decryption I use the same key and um, so it's really important to have the same key and to distinguish to distinguish that 
this key is only a part of the encryption. The real key that is used to encrypt your message or decrypt your your ciphertext will come from uh, this part of the algorithm. So here I have already generated some assemble value for you guys. So my text is hello world that have 12 bytes and my key, my input key is 55, 60, 70, and 125, 254, and 5 bytes. So the hex value for my hello world can be seen in here. So if you notice that um, when I generate, when I start to generate a key, uh, first I start without skipping any byte. So I will have a key st starting with value 73, 74, 5e, so a total 12 bytes, 12 value. So if I skip one byte, then I will start at 74. So as you see, 74, 74. So I skip two bytes, then I will start at 5e, going down. So if you if you have the same key for encryption, for decryption, you sh you should receive the same key uh, according to the number byte that you skip. Uh, so this is just a ciphertext uh, after perform XR operation. So you you can use this table to test your algorithm to see if it actually work accordingly, uh, correctly. I so that's all I have for the RC four algorithm. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to message me.